The mortars are currently not active. We're gonna have a great look at casualties later, but let's move over here to the right side and see how the Americans are doing. There's an MG gunner inside like a small trench here. And so far, he's, he's alive. He's gonna run out and get gunned the hell down by just a lot of weapons. This is so cool. There's a lot of troops moving up here on the right side. Oh, that's a mortar hit that they would probably have liked to avoid. We've got an MG inside that small side bunker. Lots of grand clips clipping away. Clinging and dinging, all that stuff. Oh, so they gotta, they gotta move, they gotta get closer. Um, it's hard to, to force the AI to think like that, but if they if they bunch up too much, the mortars are gonna have a field today. Um, how are we doing here in the center? Pretty good. Like they're, they're clearing out the trenches. Uh, we're also moving up on the left side, where we have a lot of troops moving up. This is a really freaking cool scenario, and I mean, I made it, but it's of course all possible due to the map. Um, this is this is cool stuff, man. And honestly. I love it when you don't have to tweak much, you know, change a few paths, like move some of these objects a bit more so that they could get through. But it, that comes with testing, and if you're not making a battle on the map, you're not going to notice it. So it comes with me testing the map, noticing that some units can't move somewhere and, and stuff, and it just, in the end, it's a perfect harmony. But of course, that's 0.000001% of the, the actual work on the map. It's, it's, it's so minuscule, you can't even mention it without sounding like a bit of a prick, but uh, I hope I could have advert that because I actually do know the mapper quite well. Uh, but the Shermans are doing well um, so far. They've knocked out some of the defenders over here. Uh, 50s still ripping. Oh, that gunner was shot dead by some German soldiers. Um, I wonder if he's going to get too close and get hit by some Panzerfaust or something. So far, oh, actually, well, they, they, they're dominating this side. That's nice. And we got more U.S. troops moving up on this side. It's just so cool to see them progress. Like, they're li little ants moving across this rough terrain. And it'll, it'll be super cool to look at casualties later. And it's also always so nice to know that it's a limited number that arrives in waves. Like, well, you know, we're, we're looking at about a battalion. Like a weekend battalion, you know. Not a weekend battalion. Not like a Saturday battalion. But you know what I mean. Like, around 600 men. Um... That mortar crew is about to go down. Or not. Got an MG up on the height. This flak is still active. We might see some Shermans come into support, but they're busy on the other side. It's actually a rather sizable map. Get the 30 cal up! That's a 30 cal. I'd like to see that thing in action. He's dead. So, um, these guys are pretty much custom made with the, the equipment on their backs. Um, each platoon I spent some time making. I, I can show you that after the battles so that you guys can see what goes into some of the, these battles, just for realism. It's not just spawning the units that already exist. I don't. I think I stopped doing that years ago. Ooh, that. That, uh, is this a 37 mil? Or is it a two centimeter? 20 mil. I'm pretty sure this is the, the 37 mil, that odd millimeter. We can check it out later. I'm not sure. I'm trying to see if my memory succeeds me or fails me. We've got more troops here in the center, though. This crazy position with a flak is right now eyeing down a Sherman. We have one coming in from the rear. Might be a little bit blocked by buildings, though. But there's some grenadiers here holding out. That's pretty cool, actually. They just probably arrived in a Kubelwagen. Or, no, this is a Schwimmwagen. Wagon. You guys remember when they came in uh, Company of Heroes? That was pretty cool. Did they even work? Or were they just like any other wagon? He's dead. Shot dead. What about the crew here? They're dead as well. One guy alive, but I think the barrel might be broken. Cool. Anyway, over here on this left side, how are we doing? Are we controlling? No, we haven't secured it yet. This, uh... Flak is still active. This is like in... Uh... Oh, look at it go. Nice. Did it jam? Or, or are they swapping between some kind of different munitions? 
Oh. Can it fire, like, on, on infantry? Sometimes they don't, because ammo types. It seems like he wants to, but he's hesitating. Putting a round that big into another human being. I think that's a rather sensible German here. Now he's just being shot at from so many directions. And I think... Uh, I think Dog White has been secured. Correct me if I'm wrong. I could be very, very wrong about the sector and where we are and uh, all that stuff. But, you know, that was freaking badass. The the Germans lost... A, I mean, the Americans lost a tank. They could have lost many more if the Flax would have connected. They could have lost many more infantrymen. It could have gone either way. This is also one of those battles I'd like to maybe retry on Sunday. Perhaps I should dedicate future Sundays to redoing two battles or even more altering them slightly and seeing what the result would be. So I could do the tug of war we did yesterday, where some people can complained about how the Germans had a shitty tank, or how the Soviet tank was so much better, and blah blah blah, and it wasn't fair, and blah 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 blah. Come on, I could r probably replay that exact same bat battle and get a vastly different result, and then no one would complain, or you would complain that it's unfair for the Russians. Anyway guys, let's have a look at casualties. We're gonna mark Germans in... In, in yellow and Americans in red, and we can see here on the beach, there was a crap ton of casualties. Where This is probably the majority of wave one. This is, I mean, per wave, there's six boats. There's roughly three per boat, so we're looking at 180 men per boat. So that's roughly two companies, um, a bit less. But then, of course, you've got support crew and everything else, like HQ, HQ uh, company, or HQ platoon, or team, or XO team, whatever, uh, whatever. Uh, and you've got bazookas and HMGs and medium machine guns and whatnot. Um, but like the actual infantry squads, it's about that number. Um, and then you have like rifle squads, which is what they were called. Um, so that's probably all of that. There's a lot of casualties for from wave two and three up here in the town. Like this street here is just littered. Like there are so many dead Americans here, gunned down by machine guns and mortar fire. Here in the trenches as well, we've got many, many dead. So we're looking at probably out of the 600 or so that were deployed, maybe I would... Now they're heading back to their boats, the survivors are. They usually do. And I'm not sure how many, but that leads me to the next video. Uh, oh my god, what the f Holy crap. This is like a whole platoon down right here. A whole platoon. This is like a Viet Cong ambush. Damn. Probably just dead from that MG. In fact, let's select this MG and see what it did. 43 kills, yeah. And this is indeed a 37mm flak. Did this guy get any? Uh, no, but then again, this guy, we can't select it, but I'm... Oh, and this one's down as well. Oh, yeah, we, we saw the... Oh, yeah, they got the... They got the dead crewman. So they actually got two tanks. I missed it, but... Probably knocked out by that flak or something else. I just, I just missed it. I'm sorry, but I just saw their gunner get shot. No, that was this guy up here, wasn't it? Well, that's cool. So two Shermans down. This looks really awesome. The way it's like just kind of run up against this obstacle with some crewmen out dead outside and some smoke and shit. Bam, bang, 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 bang. Good old Friday battle. Anyway, so there you go. That's the casualties. Did this guy get any? No. What about some of these machine guns? Like what? Okay, select the. What about the mortars? So that you guys get a rough estimate. This one got none because I removed him. But this guy, he's gone. This one's just fucking smithereens. Is there any mortar that's still present? This one. 20 men. Yeah, see, like, that's a lot. If you've got, like, five of them, that's, uh, you know, that's uh, 100, and 100 guys. That's 100 guys. That's, uh, you know, like a, a sixth of the... Uh, sixth of the enemy manpower just... Dead by some some steel frames, some steel tubes with legs on them, and a total of ten men crewing them. So that's it's pretty deadly. Um, let's see what some of these Shermans did. Like this guy's looking at two infantry kills, so mainly just support tanks, of course. These these guys here is looking at twelve. This one's looking at fourteen. So very low numbers, um, but once again they're just like you know, Shermans assisting uh, beach beach infantry attacking the beach. I'm going. This is going to be a long video. I'm going to show you guys um, how I made my make my troops. Now you've seen some of the scripting. Now you're going to see what goes into. Like there was like let's open that mini map. There were not of Amer There were not a lot of Americans alive. Like we got one, two, three, four, five, six, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I'm not sure how many that is. Let's say 5, uh, 21, uh, 30, 40, 50. Maybe 50 guys at tops. At tops. The Germans killed like freaking 500 men. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this. I'll, I'll, I'll say goodbye in the next clip, okay? All right, so before I say goodbye for today, I wanted to show you my uh, custom 29th Infantry Division D-Day setup. So they've got their um, pouches here at the front. I'm not sure what that is. It could be... It says gas mask. I'm not sure it is, but I've seen it in... All of the D-Day pictures and stuff. I think they had it when they were when they were uh, getting ashore. Um, so that's cool. Um, of course, you've got the um, backpacks that none of the um, standard infantry have, so you have to apply them manually, which is cool. Um, it would be really nice to put all these guys into breeds, and then I could uh, then I could upload a um, a file on the workshop that has these custom units in them, like the my D-Day, 29th Infantry Division D-Day, and then I make some for the 1st Infantry Division, and uh, I have Rangers, and I have Airborne, and everything, which is, my point is, like, so yeah, this is my platoon, 32 men, this is um, platoon commander, an officer, and a radio man, right there, um, he has the wrong helmet, though. I just realized he needs the, the officer helmet. He's got the NCO helmet, so I'm going to change that later. <laughs> anyway, and um, <clears throat> um, we've got the support teams here on the side. Um, 130 cal, one bazooka, and one flamethrower, and then uh, three uh, rifle squads of eight men in each platoon. So we've got two Thompson submachine guns, four Garands, one BAR, and one M1 carbine. I just feel like that's reasonable and kind of cool. Um, I also have uh, 1942 German Winter Soldiers. I've got the 1944 setup, which is kind of cool. Uh, I'll show you them quickly. In my um, U.S. Artillery Bombard German Infantry, I think, uh, video that I uploaded about a month ago. Um, and this one took way longer to make, uh, as you can tell. Um, there's a much larger variety here, and I've made a... Uh, no, uh, I think this should be 100 men. Yeah, so there's 10 squads, and each squad have, like, a unique skin. Uh, sometimes the game keeps resetting some of the variations, like these guys. There's four in total. Uh, that one's displaying it correctly. But anyway, uh, then I have um, helmets that fit the period um, and the uh, theater. So I've selected 10 different headgear things, whatever you want to call them. Here, here they are. So, for me, they fit uh, Battle of Bulge quite nicely. You've got some with uh, the, the winter camo and some painted white. You still have some with the, uh, the you know, the, uh, the, uh, the dot pattern or whatever this is called. It's the camouflage cover. And you have some um, also painted and you've got some caps and regular helmets like, you know, end war for the Germans. You know, they didn't really have too many strict... Uh, uniform rules uh, you know you saw a, a large variety of different uniforms and he headgear uh, on the german soldiers especially during the battle of the bulge when things were getting quite uh, iffy uh, but anyway um so that's that and I, i've got some these guys aren't actually tank crewmen this is actually uh, um i think paratroopers but in their snow uniform and to me these guys just look like the perfect tanker with the quilted uh, uniform. They look like some of the German soldiers I've seen, or German tank men I've seen on pictures. And here's just the, the dirty panzers. But apparently, and this is true, after the year of 1943, um, I believe the Germans painted all their armor as the base color it wasn't gray anymore. It was uh, Dunkelgelb, uh, which is this kind of like gray, uh, yellow, and, uh, or this kind of like, matte dark yellowish and i think it can be seen as the base paint on this one i'm looking through a few more it's more in that fashion right there and then you would camouflage them with other with other colors that's really cool it's not like this because this is too deserty but it's more i'm trying to find a good yeah i think this base color is is accurate and that's what you would see on the eastern and western front that that's an ac that's an excellent one some would probably say, oh, that's a Africa camouflage. It's, it's not true. 
they would paint that as the base color. Guess who taught me that? You guys did. One of you guys in the co uh, comment section on one of the videos where I had gray armor pointed that out. So I'm forever thankful for being able to learn more about um, World War II and uh, some of the specific stuff that people don't usually pay attention to. But yeah, so that's how I do... Uh, I'm going to just get these back in action here. Scale 1. We don't want them to have that big a heads, right? Uh, I'm a bit OCD when it comes to placement. But anyway, and uh, you might as well just go down to ground level. There we go. So yeah, that's how I make my custom troops. And then I equip them and everything. And then you have huge variety on the battlefield. Like, if you go into the actual breeds currently in Rob's, they're made for multiplayer. There's not a lot of attention to detail. But, like, if I was going to, you know, put down whatever, like, rangers. Like, they, they look so different. And, like, this works at a start, but then you start getting weird variations. It's the same with the... It's the same with the 101st. Like, it does for a while, and then it just gets weird. So... You, you kind of, you kind of, if you really care, you gotta go down gritty. Especially with, like, the Riflemen, if I was gonna make a World War II, uh, or a D-Day scenario. If I just spawn these, this is what I get, like... What's up with this guy? That's a, this is a freaking flashback from 2008. Like, holy shit. And, you know, they've got, like, varying helmets. These guys have the same ones, right? But then you spawn, like, a BAR... Actually, now they've fixed that, before they had different helmets. But... This says nothing to me. These guys are just the, the standard. This uniform works great if you're doing, like, maybe a North Africa or something. But, ugh, whatever. This guy's got a big-ass beard. Would they even allow that? Like, what? Anyway. Make your own troops, is what I'm saying. There is a shit ton of headgear that isn't even applied to any of the basic breeds, you know? You've got so much variety that you can play around with. And all of these winter skins don't even exist. As a breed for the the Germans, they have no winter uniforms or units. So what you do is it's really simple. You select one and you just go down here and you play around until you find one you like, and make sure they have the right you know um, ending like SMG or rifle or MG depending on the weapon they have. So they have the right ammo pouches. But these guys got the STG 44s and everything. Look at the variety. You will not catch a soldier with the same helmet and the same uniform. Uh, especially if I've done it 100% correct, which is um, adjusting these guys' um, text mod options. Like, if I go here. See? Like, this resets. I wish it didn't, but it does. He's got that one. He's got that one. That one. So he's supposed to be three. And everyone in this line, like this, is supposed to be three. And everyone in this line is supposed to be two. Including this guy. And then, boom, now it's very, very randomized. Very cool anyway, but it resets, so whatever. That's a big F off from the game. Um, but uh, yeah, that's going to wrap this video up. I'm pretty sure this is a two-part video by now because it's humongously large. And the better part of this video has probably been just me looking at casualties and talking about the, the editor. But uh, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys soon again. Ciao.